Hello, my brothers and sisters on this beautiful Sunday morning. Um, this is series 110. And we're going to be talking about the abomination of Cain and the Nephilim in Genesis 6, 1 through 8. And as I said before, this is going to be an interesting series talking about the abominations that occurred in the Bible that people did against God, in which is disobedience, playing out disobedience. So we, we covered the first one, which was in heaven with Satan, uh, when he um, went against God and Satan and wanted to be over God. Now we're going to cover the second abomination, which is um, Cain and Abel, which Cain killed his brother. And um, and then we're going to go into the summary of the Nephilim. Those were giants in the land uh, before the flood and after, flood, after the flood. But we're going to talk mostly about the before the flood of uh, Noah. And kind of what went on in that in that in that time period. Um, but let's talk about um, Cain right now. And I'm going to read out of Genesis four one through six. And it talks about Cain and Abel, and it's, and I'm going to read. I'm going to start. I'm going to start around five fifth verse. Uh, let's start at at, at, at at fourth verse. And it says, Abel also brought a gift and the best portion of his first, firstborn lambs from the flock. The Lord accepted Abel's and his gift. Okay, here we go with Cain. And, and Cain brought his, Cain was a farmer. So he brought his first fruit from the land. And it, then it says here, number five says, but he did not accept Cain. And his gift. Everything had to be through a blood offering, not uh, fruit, uh, food, or anything like that. So this is why he did not accept Cain. And then it says, "This made Cain very angry. It made him very angry. You know how you can get him angry sometimes, but you just won't, you just play it off uh, like it ain't nothing." But all the time you're holding a grudge. So Cain didn't hold, really hold a grudge against God. He, he held a grudge against Abel, his own brother. Because he had a better offering than he did. And that's how people do. They get jealous. And there's one thing about uh, abomination before God. People uh, that live for Satan, they started doing the same thing Satan does. I don't care who you are. You came into this world in sin, and you're going to keep on sinning until you can learn and know Jesus Christ. And it's the same thing happened right here. These people acted up because they didn't have the Holy Spirit to guide and teach them. Adam and Eve messed that up. That was the second. That was the second abomination. Turn into Satan and listen to him. Third abomination was Cain and Abel. When Cain killed his own brother. And then it says, and the uh, and he looked and he looked dejected. Not rejected, but dejected. Dejected means that he looked sumble faced. Uh, he uh was depressed because God did not want his his uh, offering. And then it says, Why are you so angry. That's what God asked him. The Lord, Lord asked Cain, why do you look so deject, dejected? It's not like God didn't know, but, you know, God asked him because he, really, he, he was asking to see if he was going to tell him. Number seven said, you will be accepted. Listen to God now. This is how, how beautiful God is and how graceful God is. He said, you will be accepted if you do what is right. That's all you got to do. And that's what he's telling us. If we do what we, we, we're we supposed to do and what is right, he don't have no problem with it. He will accept you. That's all you got to do. 
It's when you don't do what's right. That's when he rejects you. All right. Um, then, okay, okay. The next part is the, number seven says, but if you, this not God, but if you refuse to do what is right, uh, when watched, then watch out. He's telling straight up. If you don't want to do what's right, watch out. I'm telling you right now. I'm God. Sin is crushing at your door. Because, see, when you don't want to do, do what's right, here's what happens. Sin will come at your door, and you start causing all other kinds of sin to step in. You begin to think sin. You don't think what's good or what's holy. You think what's evil and bad. You think about those things every day. Uh, that's what people do. That's what evil does. That's what Satan did. When Satan turned from God, totally rejected, he, his mind was made up. I'm going all the way with this thing. I'm going to be evil as hell. Excuse my language, but that's where, he, that's where he's at. That's where he's going to be. He is evil, and he taught all his angels how to be evil. And the demons. And those evil spirits that come from them. So they're out there trying to teach you how to be evil. You got to look out because when evil starts, it starts. It is really a full, full-fledged corruption going on. And it acts in anybody it wants to who, who will let them. Um, crushing. Okay, eager to control you, you see. Sin is eager to control you then. But you must subdue it and be its master. Here's what God told Cain. He's telling you the same thing. You're the one that got to subdue that sin that tried to control you. And you're the one that's got to make it your master. I'm sorry, make your, you got to be the master of that sin. You see, you have to be there. It says, but you must subdue it and be its master. You have to be its master. You see what I'm saying? You have to have control, total control. And you only get that through from Jesus Christ. This is a, just a good lesson, man. I, this was really teaching me something. And, and, and God knows it's going to teach you something, too. Number eight says, one day Cain suggested to his brother, listen at this, let's go out into the field. See, Cain already had some, some brewing in him. He ain't forgot. He still was upset. He still was angry. I know why I was rejected. That's why he started. I know why I was rejected because it was my brother. You see, that you started thinking stupid stuff. And while they were in the field, listen to what Cain did. Cain attacked his brother, Abel, and killed him. He killed his brother. He killed his brother Cain because he couldn't produce. He he all he had to do was go ask his brother, Can you give me a lamb? Give me can you give me one of your firstborn so I can sacrifice? That's all he had to do. No, he got mad. Oh, my God. Number nine says, Afterwards, the Lord asked Cain, Where is your brother? Where is Abel? I don't know. With an attitude, I don't know. Cain responded, I'm, am, am I am my brother's keeper? With an attitude. Um, you know what you did, but you do. You Then you get an attitude because you did it. Don't want nobody questioning you. That's, but, but that's what we do. See, we have taken on the form of Satan. And so we act like Satan. That's what Jesus told his told the Pharisees when they tried to call Jesus the devil. But Jesus said, Oh no, 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 no. You are your you are of your father, the devil. You got two fathers. You got a father, the father of Father God, or you gonna have father Father Satan. And that's what just, just what Jesus told him. You are your you are of your father, the devil. And I remember I told you before, it was two spirits, God and the devil. So you're gonna react out of one of those two spirits. The Bible only talks about two spirits, and they're gonna be warned against one another. That's all. 
You got your own spirit, but it is attached to one of those two spirits. That's all. It ain't attached to just you. You ain't going to just have your way. Oh, no, no, no. You're going to do either good or you're going to do evil. One or the other. You're going to be holy or you're going to be evil. One or the other. Um, then it says, after the Lord said to Cain, da, 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 okay, number 10 says, but the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother blood cries out from the ground. Number 11 says, now you are cursed and and mm, 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 and 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 banished from the from the ground up in the seventh verse he told him that if you accept you will be accepted if you do what is right it's 11 verse says now you are cursed he gave him a chance in in in, in verse 7 now, in verse 11, he cursed him. See, the thing is, once God cursed you, you cursed. There is no coming back. Okay. Number, I'm going to jump down to 13. Cain replied to the Lord, my punishment is too great. Let me go back. Uh, let me go back to number 12. Uh, no longer will the ground yield your crops for you no matter how hard you work. From now on, you will be a uh, homeless wanderer on the earth. That was his punishment. Number 13, Cain replied to the Lord, my punishment is too great for me to bear. Mm, 14, you have banished me from the land and from your presence. Gotcha. Your presence. You have, this This is the whole key, right? You have banished me from your presence. That's what means a lot to people. That's why God said, fear me. Because one of these two things is going to happen. Either you're going to have a, a, a changed mind and turn back to me and do what's right, or you're not going to have a changed mind and you're going to do what, keep on doing what Satan tell you to do and do evil. So, but here's the, here's the catch. I'll take you back if you repent. But now if you don't repent, Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to banish you. I'm going to punish you. And that's the that's in the place of hell. That's where, you, that's where your home going to be. So, and plus you lose the presence of God. Let me tell you something, folks. If you got, if anybody have ever known God, been close to God in an intimate way, you don't want to ever feel like your, the presence of God is not around you, in you. All over you. That's a terrible feeling. And this is what uh Cain was feeling in this in this chapter. Uh you have made me a homeless wanderer. Alone oh, listen to this. Anyone who fail who finds me will kill me. He said, anybody find me, they're gonna kill me. I'm done. I don't have no protection no more. You your presence is not on me, so I I don't have no shield. This is why God said, put on, in Ephesians 6, said, put on the whole arm of God. So that you can withstand the powers of the enemy. That's why you got to do that. Right now, he don't have no shield. He don't have nothing to protect him. And the Lord replied, number 15, the Lord replied, no, for I will give a sevenfold punishment to anyone who kills you. So if you curse and somebody go out there and kill you, you got seven, you, he gonna, he gonna punish you seven times worse. No, 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 no. I wouldn't want that on nobody. But that's the, that was the, the third abomination. It's when you kill your brother and you're supposed to love him. So now we're gonna go into the Neophons, Neophons. Um, and that's in Genesis 1 through 8. A world gone wrong. And this was this was before the flood when people was in the earth and they were doing all kinds of things, acting all kinds of ways. I mean, just corrupt. I mean, once you go into corruption mode, 
uh, you're going to do anything you want to do. If you ever been out there in the world and you was out there partying and, and, and doing, when you became grown, what you call grown, you started doing anything, uh, drinking, uh, all kind of drugs, stealing, cheating, lying, backbiting, hating, killing. These are the things that people do. Don't even mention sex. Because now you have sex with anybody. I don't care whether it's a man or, or, or a woman. Man to man, woman to woman. Those are the things that you do. Then you start having having start having orgies with all having a party and everybody get butt naked. And now everybody having sex with everybody in the whole room. See, in the whole house. Because that's what they have, house parties. I had a friend of mine one time. Uh, we were, me and my twin brother was married. And this man, him and his wife, they had people to come over to their home um, certain nights. And there was married people. Three or four family uh, that's married. And just a husband and wife would come. And they would go out in the pool and get butt naked in front of everybody. But that's the kind of thing they wasn't in church. So that's what they did, you know. And they thought it was okay. It was perfectly fine to do those things. No, it's not perfectly fine to do those things. It is not. That is an abomination before God. And then he asked me and Kay, he said, won't y'all come and bring your wives? See, they wanted to have sex with our wives. Oh, man, we said, no, oh, no, we don't do stuff like that. See, that's when you got to make a choice. You, you, you have a choice to make. And it, it's either yes or no. It's out the gate with me, no. And if I have to put an a, a, a emphasis on it, it's H-E-L-L, no. So you have to have a made-up mind to do, what, do what's right. And now we're going to go into the neophons. Ne neophons. And it says, Satan, listen to what this Satan does. Satan, try, Satan tries to destroy the bloodline of the human race. That's Satan's whole object is to destroy the bloodline of the human race. Demons are evil. Twisted beings. So nothing they do should surprise you. Nothing. As to the distant motivations, once uh, one is that the demons were attempting to pollute the human bloodline in order to prevent the coming of the Messiah. God has promised that the Messiah would one day crush the head of the serpent. Genesis 3 and 15. The demons in Genesis 6 were, were uh, possibly attempted to prevent the question of the serpent and make it impossible for the sinless seed of the woman. Remember, they did try to kill Mary now and Joseph. They were trying to stop that seed from coming in the earth. But God protected them. The angels protected them. Okay, again, this is not a, not a uh, specific biblical answer, but it is a biblical uh, plausible. Um, all that the Bible just detect directly says about this is that they were heroes of old. They were the Neophons. <coughs> Men of uh, renown, uh, Genesis 6 and 4. The, ne the Neophons were literally physical beings <clears throat> produced from the union of the sons of God. Sons of God means angels, which means uh, fallen angels. Uh, angels that went bad. I'll put it that way. And the daughters of the men. And what happened was the, these uh, angels having sex with the the female humans. That's what they was doing. And so now when they had babies, they had these 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 ne neophons, which were giants. 
uh, you look at a six foot man and the, and the giant would be 10 foot or 12 feet, you see? So these were giants. These were warriors. These, I mean, they would, they would just fight and, 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 and do anything they wanted to do. And this is why the, how the land got so polluted. Um, okay, what happened to the Neophons? The Neophons were one of the primary reasons for the great flood. You see that? In Noah's name. Uh, in Noah's time, I'm sorry. Immediately after the mention of the Neophons, God's word says, the Lord saw how great man's wickedness and on the earth had became and that every uh, inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. When you start doing evil, everything, I'm, 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 before I became saved, I just did what I wanted to do. Because I thought that was the norm. And if you think that's the norm, that's what you're going to do. And that's what these people thought. That, it was, that was the norm. And so they, they were evil. Satan had got into them. And and the demons started spreading everywhere. And telling them what the, the demonic spirits were telling them what to do. And so that's just what they did. And that's how the land became so wicked. Because all these sexual desires. These wrong sexes and the desires. And I'm going to get into that too. That's going to be in my next lesson. But I'm going to tell you exactly some of those things that these uh, neophytes was doing. And they taught other, the other humans how to do the same thing. So they all did the same thing. Um, the Lord was grieved that he even had made the earth and his heart was filled with pain. I know how God must have felt to see his 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 people go bad and the cause of it. Mm -mm -mm. And that every oh, no, 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 no. heart said, I will wipe mankind. So the Lord said, I will wipe mankind who I have created from the face of the earth, men and animals. He's gonna get rid of everybody and creatures that move along on the ground and birds of the air. For I am grieved that I ever, that I have, I am grieved that I have made them. And that's in Genesis 5, uh, 6, 5 through 7. God preceded the flood, the flood, the entire earth. He, he flooded the whole earth, killing everyone and everything Everything other than Noah, his family and his animals and, and the ark all uh, easily perished. Oh, no, 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 no. And the animals on the ark. All, okay, all else perished, including the ne neophons. They perished too. And that's in Genesis 6. Just read the whole chapter and then you get a clear understanding of it. Genesis 6, uh, 11 through 20, 22. It is even possible that some 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 uh, triad of the neophons, some traits of the neophons were passed on through the heretic heretic of one of one of Noah's darling laws. We don't know where the wise who they were and where they came from. But back in that day, it um, was one family saved, and that was Noah and his wife. So the kids had to go and get a wife from somewhere. So evidently, they lived close to the to that 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 neighborhood in that neighborhood. So they had got wives from these uh, uh, women who had near from near near from near from. And so that's how probably that they, why when they went after the flood, they started having babies again. And then they started having these other neophytes because they were sighted in the land of uh, Canaan. 
And so, <clears throat> and that was, that was by Ham. Ham uh, was the corrupt son of Noah. And so his, 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 um, he had the Canaanites and they were bad people. And that's where he had a lot of giants in that, in that clan as well. So his wife could have very well been uh, an offspring of those uh, Neophrims. Um, okay, Noah's daughter-in-law. Daughter the descendants of Anak came from the Neophrim. Anak was a large giant as well. And he came from the Anakims. And there was a group of giants as well, but he was one of the largest and the, mo the one of the greatest. I'll put that put it that way. And um, whatever the case, these giants were destroyed were destroyed by the Israelites during their their um, invasion of Canaan. Joshua, he just him and. Um, his partner, they went over and saw the land, and um, God told them to destroy. Him. And later in that in that history, uh, Deuteronomy 31, 3, 3 and eleven, and Samuel uh, seventeen, uh, what prevailed in the what prevented the demons from producing more near friends today? It seemed that God put an end to the demon mating with humans. By placing all the demons who committed such an act in solid and solitude, in, in, in solitude, and you'll find that in Jude. This is in the New Testament too. This is in Jude, real small book at the end of the chapter, right before uh, uh, Revelation, uh, Jude verse six. It only has one chapter. It tells us that the angels who did not keep their uh, positions and positions of authority, but abandoned their own home. This is what the angels did. This is what he's talking about. The angels abandoned the, what they were supposed to do. And they didn't want to do what God wanted to do anymore. They just wanted to do what Satan wanted to do. And here's what happened to him. And these these he, he has kept in darkness, bound in everlasting change from the judgment, for the judgment on the great day. See, those are the ones that back when I was teaching Revelation, those are the ones that in the end time that God is going to release that's kept in chains. Those are angels that were so bad and doing so many bad things on earth. All kinds of sexual sins, that's what they were doing. They just corrupted the earth. And God put these angels in, in, in chains. And that's why he kept them there. Because in other words, he, they would have really polluted the earth. And this is what the same thing God said in the end times. And Solomon Gomorrah, same thing. He destroyed that city too because it was just too much chaos going on. All kinds of sexual intercourses and everything with any anything and everything. Animals, they were having sex with animals. They were having men against men, women against women. They were just doing everything nasty and everything against God. And it was an abomination to God. That's why he destroyed Solomon Gomorrah as well. Obviously, not all demons are in prison today. Some of some there some there must have been a group of demons who committed further uh, 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 grievances, sins, behold beyond the original fall. Presumably, presumably, the demons who made it with human females are the ones who are. Bound with everlasting change. This would prevent any more demons from attempting such sins. I, I and that that makes so much sense. If God put you in chains, those other those other angels. Oh wait a minute, nah, nah, I ain't doing that because I know that I can't. I as long as I'm free and I'm running through the world, I can kill, steal, and destroy whoever I want to. But when I start messing up and start having sex with these people then I know what God's going to do with me. So, yeah, that, I can understand that part there. Why, um, why did the narrator say that? 
And then I'm going to go to Genesis 6, 1 through 8. And it says the world gone bad. Genesis 1 says, when the people began to multiply on the earth and daughters were born to them. Number two says, the son of God, the sons of God saw the beautiful women and took any they wanted as their wives. That's what these angels did. And then it says three, then the, the bad angels rather. Then the Lord said, my spirit will not put up with put up with humans for such a long time for that for they are only moral flesh in the future the moral uh lifespan will be more will be no more than 120 years that's when he cut the lifespan right there he said no ain't nobody gonna live no more than 120 years that's it because remember they would live they would live in 900 years a thousand years you see so now he cut the last man off because mm -mm. so there's too much corruption going on. Number four says, in those days and and for some time after, giant neophims lived on the earth for uh, for whatever the sons of God and the intercourse with sons of God, uh, sons of God had intercourse with women. They gave birth to children who became the heroes and the and the famous warriors of ancient time. Number five says the Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth, and he saw the he saw that everything they thought or imagined was constantly and totally evil. Number six says, so the Lord was so, so the Lord was sorry he had ever made them and put them on the earth. It broke his heart. It broke God's heart to see man so wicked because they wasn't following the, the image of God. They was following the image, image of Satan himself, which was Satan was an abomination. And he saw his people that he created was going bad the same way Satan did and it broke his heart and the Lord said I will I will wipe this this human race from this human race to have created from the face of the earth yes I know I and I will destroy every living thing all the people and all the animals and small animals and the, and and scary uh, that scurry along the ground and even the birds of the sky. I am sorry I ever made them. But Noah found favor with the Lord. No, if God can just find one person, just find one person that served him, he will save mankind. Just like he did Lot. That's all he ever found. Abraham asked, asked the two angels, but what if, what if you find 30? What if you find 40? What if you find 10? Will you save the city? And God said, yes, I'll save the city. For the sake of one or 10 people, God will save your household. That's all it takes. One person to serve God wholeheartedly. Mm, mm, mm. Now I'm going to jump down here. In uh, Jude, let's go to Jude. I love Jude. Jude 1, 3 to 7. And this is the danger of false teaching. Number 3 says, Dear friends, I had been uh, urgently planned the right to write you, to write to you about the salvation we all share. But now I find that I must write about something else. I wanted to write to you about something. About uh, about the further movement of Jesus Christ, but now I gotta write to you about something. Paul had to do the same thing because he see y'all going backwards. <laughs> so I gotta write to you about something else now. Uh, something about something. Okay, urging you to the 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 define. No, urging you to defend the faith that God has entrusted once for all 
time to his holy people. He entrusted, he entrusted Jesus into us. He entrusted his faith into us. We cannot let him down by doing evil. I say this because some uh, ungodly people have, have, have borne their way into the church. Mm. Saying that God's uh, previous grace allows us to live immoral lives. That's what it says. God's grace gives us the right to live immoral lives. See, that's what's wrong with the church right today. That's what's wrong with the Pharisee, Sadducee. They thought they could, they could, thought they could be saved, and yet they could still live the same way. You can't do it. You can't do it. And they, and they, and Paul had a problem with it. Peter had a problem with it. Jesus had a problem. And Jude had a problem with it too. Timothy had a problem with it. They wasn't living right. In the church, but you won't live right. You still want a whole mama. You still want a covenant. And practice that same thing. You still had that great desire to do those wrong things. No, God said no, 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 no. That's not it. And listen at this. Mm. The the okay. The condemnation of such people was recorded long ago. Here we talking about. This is why, like about Jew, he go way back into in, into the past. This recorded long ago. For they have denied not our our only master, the Lord Jesus Christ. So I wa I wanted to. Remind you, through uh, through you, already know these things: that Jesus first uh, uh, received the na the nation of Israel from Egypt, but later he destroyed those who did not remain faithful. And I rem I rem I remain. I remind you of the angels who did not say, <coughs> who did not stay within the limits of the authority of God gave them, but they, but left the place where they belong. He's talking about those angels that messed up before the flood. That's what he's talking about. And, um, well, he said he condemned the condemnation of such people was recorded long ago. He's talking about those same people. He's talking about the people that that was in Solomon Moore and the people that was before the flood. They don't want to do what was right. Um, God gave. Told him God gave. Them, but left, left, but left the place where they belong. God has kept them secure, chains in prison of darkness, waiting for the, the great day of judgment. You see, that's what he's talking about. Those angels that messed up and had sex with with the women and had giant babies. This is where those those angels are still at right now. And he's reminding these people, these people in that time, he was reminding them, this is where you're going to go to. If you don't do what's right, this is where you're going to go. Uh, number seven says, and don't forget, so oh, and don't forget Sodom and Gomorrah mm -mm -mm. and their neighbors' towns, which were filled with immortality. And every kind of sexual perversion. You see what I'm saying? Sexual perversion. This is where this is when it got so bad that these people was having sex any kind of way, every way, and hell and, and, and all over the place in every neighborhood. He said, Oh no, this is too wicked. I gotta put a stop to it. Oh man. Which was filled with immortality and every 
kind of sexual perversion. Those cities were destroyed by fire and served as a warning of the eternal fire of God's judgment. It's a warning, people. God did all these things. He destroyed the, the, the people in the flood. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. He did it for a warning for us. Don't do what's wrong. Don't do what they did. All these different types of sexual sins, I'm going to list those in the next in the lesson. I'm going to list them for you. I'm going to tell, tell you what they were, what they were. But this is what God was talking about. He's calling us to clean ourselves up. Live for him. He's not playing. On the day of judgment, he's going to show you he's not playing. So with that, my, my loved ones, God loves you. I love you. Stay with God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.